it is officially here. Marvel Spider-Man 2 from Insomniac Games and Sony is now out. I would like to take a moment to say thank you to Sony and Insomniac Games for sending us a code to be able to provide a preview of this. This will unfortunately not be a full review as I would like to take my time and really do everything there is and then come back to it and talk about it with the rest of the CBC guys, but that's not going to be for a while. What you are going to see here is gameplay from the first 45 minutes of the game, which features very little spoilers if you've seen anything they released right prior to the game actually releasing. Now, with that said, some of this could be considered a spoiler, so if you want to avoid everything, please don't watch any further. Now, with that out of the way, at the time I'm recording this, Sony sent me the early review code about a day before its release. I put in about eight hours of the game, which is what these impressions are based on, and I think it's enough to understand how it's different yet similar to the first two outings. Of course, I'm talking about Marvel Spider-Man and Miles Morales. So first and foremost, let me just say that I love how Sony has started to integrate their literal start of the game into like the opening scene. You just hit a button and you get going, it drops you into the game, and it feels almost like the old DVD and early generation Blu-ray menus. We're just right into the action and it's all seamless. And speaking of seamless, just to jump slightly ahead, low times are absolutely incredible in this. And the one thing I noticed is I am glad that they added the ability to actually just hold the button to transport or teleport to the other character and play as them because it could easily be mistaken as, whoops, I accidentally clicked this and I suddenly switched to Miles or Peter when I didn't want to. It's seamless, integrated very well, and very rapid under a second in just about every instance. Now that I got that out of the way, let's talk about the game itself. First and foremost, the visual options here are great. You got 30 frames per second, you got 60 frames per second, both including ray tracing, and then if your TV like mine supports 120 hertz and VRR, you are in luck because you get the best of everything, including a super stable frame rate from my experience. So I've been playing on that, and that's where all this footage was recorded on, was that mode. Now, I do want to say that if you're familiar with the first two games, you're going to drop straight back into this and know exactly what to do. All the controls are the same. Nothing has been changed, and I think that is honestly a smart choice. The combos feel the same, especially when you start out, because they don't depower you like many other games. You start as Peter and as Miles with a pretty good assortment of powers. Quickly, you're going to unlock some new things. Um, again, I don't want to spoil them, but they will be in this video, so I don't really know if it's a spoiler or not. Anyways, you're going to see, for example, the, well, I guess we call him the superior arms now on Spider-Man, but they're like the Doc Ock arms, right? He's got his own. Miles, he's pretty powerful. And what really came across with this to me was just how overpowered they felt very early on, but the game balances them out and then tosses new enemies and new things at you all the time to kind of keep you going. Now, I will say that one complaint I do have is the fact that no matter where you're going to go in New York, you're going to see the same types of villains, right? Um, this is expected as that's the story. Maybe they could have buried it up a little bit, but who knows? Again, I'm not a game designer, so that's neither here nor there for me to talk about. What I do want to talk about is how the game feels to play, and it is smooth. It is fluid. It feels like it's a refinement of the first two games in the best way possible. Like they listen to most complaints and address them. And a handful of hours into the game, I was still finding myself relatively surprised and really wondering how they find new ways to be able to toss Spider-Man against villains and mix up the gameplay, especially the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, and how that changed. Sometimes it felt like on the fly I was getting introduced to new things hours in. Which I think, again, is a great sign of the game isn't going to just fall into the basics and slow down and get into that like repetitive monotony. Obviously, it's going to happen to some degree. It happens with every open world game. But if you're just to go through the story, it feels like that it's going to feel relatively fresh. Now, the one thing I obviously haven't talked about is the story. And I don't really want to spoil anything. But I will say... Right from the start, literally when I hit that start button on the menu and it started to roll, I was like, boy, I did not expect that. 
so that's a good indicator that you're probably going to want to stick with the story. And I think that there's a lot going on here for Spider-Man fans that's going to take established lore and things we expect and remix it in certain ways that I think it honestly is refreshing. And certainly, like with MCU Spider-Man, there's going to be a certain degree of backlash because you change things from the comics. But at this point, everybody should be used to the Spider-Verse. So let's just go with that. It's a new version. Just get used to it and enjoy the ride. Speaking of enjoying the ride, if you have those Sony 3D headphones, the ones that are like made for the PlayStation 5, if you're going to be playing this alone, I suggest you use them unless you have a really, really good set of uh, speakers on your TV or a surround sound system because the 3D headphones add a lot. It sometimes felt like I could hear exactly if they were above me, below me. Of course, I'm talking about the enemies. If there was a guy sneaking up on me, if a missile was coming from like my lower left, I could hear it on the headphones. Truly, the audio design on these games is superb. Which also brings me to some other accessibility things, which is the accessibility features. They're here. They're great. The game is loaded with them. You're not going to, yeah, you're not going to have any sort of problems adjusting the game to your liking. Skip QTEs, for example. Sure enough, slow down the game when it gets hectic to 50%. You can do it. Lower how much damage you take and how much you put out. Sure enough, puzzle hints, here they are. It's all here, and it honestly felt really refreshing and... It's nice to see these types of options, especially that Sony tends to be the company that's putting the most accessibility options into all of their first party games. And let's talk about this as a first party game. Is it the best game I've played all year? Um, I'm not going to answer that question because I know that always starts a war. What I can tell you is I like it more than Starfield because that game is terrible. I kid, enjoy whatever you want. Um, this will certainly end up being one of my favorite games of the year, but it's because it has all the things I like in a lot of video games. So, again, it's going to be up to everybody individually. The one thing that's getting me through this game more than I thought it would be is, honestly, New York. I figured, look, I played this to nauseum. I know New York from the first game in Miles Morales. I certainly know it from that one. I replayed both on PC... So I played my fair share of Spider-Man, and I figured, you know what, New York is going to be kind of boring again. It is not. Thanks to this being an exclusive on just the current-gen PlayStation 5, and obviously PC at some point down the road, they were allowed to add tiny little details, add individual little vibes and feelings to specific locations in New York. And if you've ever been to New York, you know what I'm talking about. And just... Over a month and a half ago, I was at a rave in New York, and I went to that exact location, and sure enough, all the locations that I saw were there, recreated pretty faithfully. Of course, some are missing because of uh, legal rights and how the mafia owns specific buildings and all that still, but outside of those noticeable things, it is New York, and it feels the best it's ever felt in any game, maybe right there on par with, I would say, Division 1, those specific corners that they did where... The world really felt like New York during Christmas, which Miles Morales also nailed. But again, the world keeps on changing and there's new elements. There's, as the story evolves, things change. So you're going to have to experience this on your own. Overall, what I want to say about this game without hopefully spoiling anything, and if I did spoil much of anything, I'm sorry, I'm really trying to keep it um, very spoiler-free, is that this game is exactly what I think most Spider-Man fans wanted when they find out, hey, a sequel is coming. Well... This is the sequel I think you want. It's bigger. It's better. It's more ambitious. It does a lot of things to do the exact thing we want them to do. Unfortunately, though, I can see how some people are going to be a little disappointed because they're going to want a lot more out of this. It feels like a true sequel in the sense that you had Assassin's Creed 2 to Assassin's Creed Brotherhood to Revelations. It's far more of that type of linear progression than a Assassin's Creed black flag to a unity where they try to overhaul the entire engine and tech and fall short of it. And what I'm about to say is not a insult at this game. I want you to listen to what I'm saying very carefully. Spider-Man 2 is a safe continuation of everything that works with the first two games refined to its absolute perfection. It doesn't do many things new, and it doesn't change the whole game 
outside of a couple of hints of you see maybe what they're hinting for at the next game. And I think these things, if explored, will truly be that sort of old Assassin's Creed to an evolution or a Witcher 2 to the Witcher 3 level where suddenly you have one of the best games of all time. This is a sequel that feels like it was made to refine everything before they take a bold new step with the next game. And I truly feel that the next one, Insomniac, might actually deliver a magnum opus on the scale that nobody thought possible in a superhero game. That's what this game truly feels like. It's building up to that, much like we had with Mass Effect going from the first one to the second one. So I'm honestly quite blown away by this. I'm going to keep playing it. We're going to have a long discussion at some point down the road and discuss a lot about this game. That will obviously be spoiler filled as it's going to be a full look into everything. But this game is a game that I didn't think could pull off the hype that I had for it built up in my brain. And it does it. But I also did not go into this expecting, you know, everything possible that I could imagine in one sequel. They're leaving things for the next one. And that shows. But it doesn't hinder this game at all from being what I would consider right now, with only eight hours in, if it maintains this by the time I'm done, the best superhero game I've ever played.